Hi, this is Randy Wyckoff, the Dean of the College of Public Health at East Tennessee State University. And I'm pleased to provide the 101st weekly update with data accurate through April 21st, 2022. This week, I'll address two questions that have come in. One is, are we seeing a resurgence? And second, is it safe to travel overseas? Well, are we seeing a resurgence? There's been a lot of information, a lot of discussion about this, but if you look at the data, it doesn't look like we are in the midst of a significant resurgence. If we look at daily deaths, we actually the number globally is as low as it has been at any time since late March, 2020. We have had over 6 million deaths worldwide and we're running a little over 2000 deaths a day. So the pandemic definitely isn't over, but we're not seeing an uptick in deaths as we did before. We are following, of course, France, Germany, and the United Kingdom in terms of deaths. Uh, they look like they are now either coming down or leveling off. Now, obviously these things can change pretty quickly. So we'll, keep, we'll continue to keep our eye on them. In terms of the United States, it looks like there we might be seeing a little bit of an uptick in total number of cases, but hospitalizations are as low as they've been at any point in the last year and a half as our deaths. In fact, deaths are almost at the low point that we saw in July of 2021, and of course, are at the lowest point since that early spike uh, in 2020. We've had over a million deaths in the United States, and we're running about 300 deaths a day. So still a significant pandemic, but as you can see, there isn't the uptick that we would expect to be seeing. Now, across the country, if you look at cases, your eye is immediately drawn here to the Northeast. They are seeing more cases. Whether this is the beginning of a resurgence, and we've seen, you know, the very initial pandemic in the U.S. began in the large cities and then spread uh, west and south. Uh, but if you look at uh, New York, Massachusetts, and Connecticut, you do see an increase in cases, though it's pretty small, and we're not yet seeing an increase in deaths. But we'll keep our eye on this for sure, because the early sign of a resurgence would be that we're starting to see increased cases, then hospitalizations, then deaths. So at this point, uh, we are continuing to see the number of deaths going down or staying stable. But of course, as we've seen multiple times in the history of this pandemic, that can turn around very quickly. So we'll keep our eye on it. But for the moment, I think we can say we're not seeing a significant resurgence yet. Now, a question that has come in because we're not seeing a significant resurgence is, is it safe to travel overseas? And this is actually not as easy a question to answer as you might think, because it is extremely dependent on the individual. So because the risk of COVID and many other diseases is directly related to your own underlying health conditions, I can't give you individual advice. It is extremely important that anyone who wants to travel overseas consult their personal health care provider. There's no substitute for that. Are you healthy enough to travel? Whether your risk factor is age, underlying health condition, or whatever it is, please talk to your health care provider before you make a decision to travel. Obviously, one of the things that your healthcare provider will want to know, and you will want to know, is what's going on with COVID-19 in the countries that you'll be visiting, and useful information is on this website here. And by the way, I'm going to put all of these websites in the email that accompanies this video so you don't have to try to jot them down as they swing past you. Um, as a general piece of advice, I'm always concerned when people travel to countries outside of the most economically developed countries without visiting a qualified travel clinic. There's a lot of information that you need to get from a qualified travel healthcare advisor about vaccines, malaria prophylaxis, food and water safety, and so on. There's a good a website here that can take you to information about travel clinics. Now, another issue, of course, is 
what happens to you if you get sick in the host country. So you want to be sure that there is the capacity to get access to health care in the country that you're going to visit. And the CDC website lists a number of useful ways of finding that out. Of course, getting access to health care is important, but you also want to be sure it's paid for. So please talk to your health care insurance company before you travel to be sure that any health care expenses will be covered. And almost always, the advice is that you should take essential medications with you. Even in some of the most economically developed countries, the medications may have different names, may come in different doses, may not be the same ones, same brand that you're used to taking. So with some exceptions that you should talk to your healthcare provider about, you should take essential medications with you. As an aside, uh, Please check with your credit card company, your phone carrier, to be sure that you will be covered overseas so that you don't find yourself with no income and no access to communication. The other very important issue that many people ignore is your passport. They say, well, my passport is still valid, but many countries require it to be valid for at least six months after travel to have at least one blank page. You just have to check the requirements of your host country. Now, obviously, in terms of COVID, many countries have a requirement related to vaccines or testing. You should definitely check and recheck shortly before you travel to be sure that you're compliant. You do not want to arrive in a country and be required to quarantine for two weeks or whatever amount of time. So there is the website, but please check it regularly, especially right before you travel. And you may even want to go to the website of your host country's embassy or, or High Commission here in the United States to be sure that you know the latest expectation. By the same token, when you come back to the States, there are requirements. Now, this may change, but as of right now, before coming back to the States, you have to get a valid COVID test no more than one day before you travel back to the United States. Now, this can be quite complicated, especially if you're leaving the host country early in the morning and flying overnight or whatever. But do check this before you travel. And you also want to make sure that you can get that test in the host country. Now, obviously, being fully vaccinated and boosted greatly reduces your chance of getting serious illness for COVID-19. So if you are not boosted, vaccinated and boosted, I would strongly encourage you to consider doing so or not traveling overseas. And also be sure to take with you a plenty of appropriate masks. Uh, while mask mandates may be debated in our country, these are not issues that you can debate freely in other countries. And by the way, when I travel by air, I do wear a mask all of the time, except when I'm eating or drinking. And finally, some very useful advice for travelers in general, not just related to COVID on the CDC website. I'd strongly encourage you to look up the country that you're considering going to, uh, just as you like to read about the history and the, the politics and the geography of those countries, you should also understand their health challenges. So are we seeing a resurgence? Mm, probably not. Is it safe to travel overseas? Yes, probably, depending on your health. But before you go, please talk to your health care provider. I personally am planning two overseas trips this summer, so I obviously think it's safe enough for me, but I cannot speak about you because I don't know your personal health issues. Great deal more information about COVID-19 on the College of Public Health website. If you're sharing these videos with anyone, please let us know. We'd be happy to add them to our mailing list. As always, I'd like to thank Dara Young for editing, producing, and posting this video and all of our weekly updates. And as you can see, I try to answer your questions. So if you have any questions about COVID-19 or about the videos, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next week, please be well.